What's the word, y'all? Welcome to day number two of the playoff recap. Don't you absolutely love when you think you're recording the video and you forgot to hit the forgot to hit the button? Leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Let's get into it. Oh, no, no, no. Before we get into it, I got to let you know that these recap episodes are also available on audio platforms. So that's Spotify, that's Apple Podcasts. Go type in Called Game and subscribe. Even if you're a guy that loves the YouTube recaps, help the channel out by subscribing to the audio feed. It does help out tremendously. I am no longer going in the order of the game. So Phoenix, uh, Philly versus Washington, y'all got to hold on because I want to talk about Phoenix getting the win against the Lakers. If you didn't know, going into game number one, the Phoenix Suns were the favorite for the game but the underdog for this series. And I've I've expressed this multiple times on this channel recently. I am lightly rooting for the Phoenix Suns. I'm, I'm a secondary Phoenix Suns fan because uh, my boy CP plays for them. And the time is ticking for CP to finally get that ring. I understand that the Phoenix Suns are probably not going to win the championship, but I'm going to root for them. You know what I'm saying? And when this man went down with that injury, I promise you my, my heart fell out of my chest. Because as a guy that has had multiple shoulder surgeries, I understand how bad a shoulder injury can be. And this was not like a heavily contact injury. It was it looked like very light contact. And he's on the floor. He's in pain. And so am I. And so is every Phoenix Suns fan across. The, and listen, every NBA fan should also see this because we don't want to see any injuries. Even if you're a Lakers fan, you don't want to see any injuries in the game of basketball. But luckily, he came back. But he was not. He didn't look good. You know what I'm saying? This man usually has the ball on the string. He just was leaving the ball out there he lost it like three to four times and i'm like yeah uh, i'm hoping this is not a lingering injury and hopefully this is like 24 hours under on some ice on some massaging he'll be fine but it's something you should really look at luckily for him he had his remaining cast step up to the plate i don't know why weirdos needed devin booker to do devin booker type things in the playoffs for them to give him his respect but hey he did it in the game one in the playoffs against the defending champions can he get the respect now because he deserves it. This man was out there absolutely dominated. It didn't matter where you regarded him. He was going to get to his spots, and he was going to put up a shot right over the hands of Anthony Davis. Boy, 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 Anthony. You know what? We're going to save the Anthony Davis talk to a little bit later. Let's continue to show our love to the Phoenix Suns. Devin Booker does his thing. Mikel Bridges. The, oh, Mikel Bridges. Devin Booker. DeAndre Aiden. Cameron Johnson. Maybe Cameron Payne. I would have to look at Cameron Payne's basketball reference. A lot of the guys in the immediate rotation for the Phoenix Suns, this is their first time getting playoff minutes. And sometimes that pressure really gets to the younger players. Now with the Phoenix Suns, this man, Monty Williams, had this amazing pep talk in the huddle. I've been sitting here from 12 o'clock when, when the first game came on to now 1130. I've been sitting here for 11 and a half hours. It's bad for my health. I understand that. But... When Monty Williams was in this huddle, giving his pep talk, he made me want to lace up my sneakers and, and go hoop. And that's not even what I do. Monty Williams giving an amazing, amazing pep talk to the guys to eventually get them to win this game. Mikel Bridges' defense on LeBron was stellar. And DeAndre Aiden, DeAndre Aiden, DeAndre Aiden is the extreme X factor for this series. And you saw why this is why he was drafted number one. I understand there was a guy drafted a little bit after him that is also a superstar, but whatever. You can't, you can't look at those past things when this man is doing this thing, dominating. He got that tattooed across his back. He really showcased that today against one of the best bigs in basketball. He is really the X Factor, man. A 21-16 game is amazing because if you remember, if you're really a fan of these recaps, you know a lot of the times when I'm talking about the Phoenix Suns, one of the major criticisms I have about them is that DeAndre Aiden doesn't get enough looks. Today they looked for him like no other. There had to be a point of emphasis on the they still do whiteboard things. On the whiteboard, look for DeAndre Aiden because his man is ready. And he was. Missing one total shot in the entire game. Playing great offense and also great defense. If he could continue to do stuff like this for this series, I like the chances of the Phoenix Suns. But let's talk about the Lakers because they lose this game by nine. This is one of the few times in LeBron James' career where it didn't feel like LeBron James was playing. Now, I understand he typically takes these game ones to take a feel for things. LeBron James loses game ones every year. It's just what he does. But this one is a little feels a little bit different because he didn't. it didn't even feel like – sometimes he loses these game ones, but he'll have this period of time where he takes over for two to three minutes, and he's like, oh, yeah, he's still LeBron. Today, he didn't do those things. And I'm not saying that LeBron, <laughs> people going to misinterpret that by me say, thinking I'm saying that LeBron is wise and they have no chance because that is very, very far from the truth. They only lost by nine when LeBron and Anthony Davis were bad. They are they are a, a little above average three-point shooter team, and today they shot terribly from three. So there are some things you can look at from the L.A. Lakers and be like, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. Anthony Davis had his worst outing ever? 
and me, me and the guys have this conversation all the time about Anthony Davis or whether or not Anthony Davis is a real superstar. And I understand it don't matter at the end of the day. What is the definition of a superstar? We can have a whole conversation. It doesn't matter. But performances like this make you think that he, it's OK to just be an all star caliber player. But we also see the games where like early this season, his season high was against this team. So I'm thinking he going to come in feasting, right? He scored 42 against them. He has those games where he is unguardable, but he has these games where he settles or he just feel like he don't want to play the man that's playing too much RP. <laughs> I, I like to make that joke because um, because there are people out there that really think that uh, because NBA players don't spend all of their time playing basketball, that that's the reason why they're bad. I already saw people on there like Anthony Davis got to stop streaming. That's that's not why he played bad. <laughs> I promise you his his role in GTA is not why he played bad today. But man, it was it was really dreadful, bro. It's, it's like one of those, I don't expect him to ever play this bad again. If he does, hey, that's that's a little bit rough. So um, the, Andre Drummond's minutes are are weird. Like you look at his box score, 12-9, a block of steel, just, just two turnovers. What? Nah, bro, that's false, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. His impact was not a net positive in this game, even though he scored 12 points. He had one less point than Anthony Davis today. That is ridiculous. I, they need to find a way to play Marcus Gasol. Matchup-wise, I think Marcus Gasol is a little bit better than um, what Andre Drummond can give you. Montrez was not bad today by any means, but I do believe that Marcus Gasol should be getting some. The fact that he got literally zero minutes in a game where the, the opposing player that was dominating was a big is weird because positionally, this man is really, really good defensively. Like He won the defensive player of the year. I know it's almost a decade ago, but he won the defensive player of the year. Well, two years ago, he was a part of a finals run where his defense was one of the main proponents of it. And I know he ain't the same as just two years ago, a decade ago, when he won defensive player of the year. But you cannot tell me Marcus Gasol wouldn't be able to help you on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, Cal Kuz didn't do anything today. Like, like the Lakers lost by nine with nobody doing anything. So, again, that could be a thing for them. But shout out to the Phoenix Suns coming out here and providing a win when um, when nothing is promised in this league, man. What a game. Next game I want to talk about, we got to move over to the mecca of basketball because, oh, my God, I was so jealous. Everybody that was at this Knicks game today, I understand y'all caught an L. It's fine. I'm jealous that you got to experience playoff basketball in New York City. The mecca has never looked more exciting. These boys were down by 12 points at one point, and it didn't matter. The fans were out there, and it helped the team stay into it. So let's talk about it. Talk about them as a team to start off with. Julius Randle had one of his worst games of the season, and they lost by two. I feel like I'm a broken record saying these type of things. Hey, my star player had a bad game, and I only lost by this amount of points. But it does matter. I mean, Julius Randle was terrible today absolutely terrible today he, I think he had one like really timely shot but other than that like the fa the final play was drew up for him and I didn't understand that at all especially since this man Alec Burst turned into I don't know who has the most points in a single quarter Clay Thompson in the fourth quarter he was doing everything he wanted and I like the Phoenix I like the uh the New York Knicks because they they do the mid-range game and I love a team that can uh, just step in a little bit you know, I love three-point shooting too, but I also love a team that can step in a little bit. And they did a lot of that today. They did a lot of that today. Derrick Rose. Let me talk about Derrick Rose for a minute. I understand. I'm the biggest Derrick Rose fan out there, so I'm going to give him his roses. He played good today. But every Derrick Rose fan, every Bulls fan, every person that has followed Derrick Rose throughout his career will tell you this man, the way they officiate this man should be criminal criminal and he is a he's not a high flyer anymore but he's a guy that contorts his body but he be getting so much contact for him to shoot a whopping zero free throws in this game is mind-blowing to me mind-blowing to me there are multiple times he drove to the basket he got beat up and I'm like bro what is happening even in this MVP season we were all saying this man should be shooting four to six more free throws a game because he is getting his ass beat out there the refs just don't know how to officiate a player like him because he does contort like this he makes you think that he may be not getting contact sometimes I just wait Derrick Rose went straight up because he'll get his foul call but then again he does the whoop the whoop and then it's a basket so I don't know he should be getting way more foul calls than what he does that's all I'm saying that's all I'm saying again Alec Burks um great um, you even got some minutes from Obi Toppin. It was really good hitting that top of the corner, uh, top of the key three. Uh, man, you quickly. Everybody came 
to play today except for the guy you needed the most, and that, of course, is Julius Randle. But there are a lot of things you could walk away from this game and be proud of. I want to talk about the Atlanta Hawks because I'm praying that this becomes a rivalry between these two teams because I can see it. I can definitely see it. This man, Trey Young, talking trash. I love a player that can talk trash. It's good for basketball. I'm going to talk about Dylan Brooks later, but I love players that can turn the heel. Be the bad guy. We don't have many of those in basketball today. And Trey Young can be the bad guy for the New York Knicks. I, I would love it. I would love it. Now, I, they the Knicks did an amazing job guarding Trey Young as far as not allowing him to get to the free throw line until the fourth quarter. Um, they got a little bit sloppy with it. I know Knicks fans are really upset with Trey Young. I think 99% of NBA fans despise the way Trey Young draws his fouls. But it's the way it is. That's just why. It, it's, it's, it's the way it is. Hey, they won this game because of his ability to draw fouls. So it's either – it's he's not going to change the way he plays. It has to be the NBA and the way they ref the game has to be reformulated because this is easy points for them. For him to be as good of a free throw shooter, why not do this in a close game when you need baskets? You know what I'm saying? And then him hitting the shot. He called game. You know I had to say it. He did his thing today. I think DeAndre Hunter's defense on Julius Randle was a huge, huge X factor today um, because – I knew that John Collins wasn't going to get the assignment. I knew Clint Capella was going to get the assignment because Daniel Zoel is down there. So it's all on DeAndre Aiden, and his defense is so amazing. Um, Tony Snell only shot 50% from three. I guess that's a season average, so what a good game from him. Uh, overall, the atmosphere of this game felt like the epitome. Is that the word? It felt like the real play. This felt like the playoffs. Now, I don't remember the capacity of what the Knicks are. Is it 50% or something? It don't matter. It's just the way Madison Square Garden is built. They can have six fans in there. It's going to sound like 2,000. They got 2,000. It's going to sound like 20,000. And, man, the Knicks fans came out today. I'm excited to watch game two of this one because I, I think that they're they going to they gonna hit Trey Young kind of hard here. You know what I'm saying? He was he was doing a little bit too much yapping for New York Knicks players. And I feel like they got a couple that are throw a little cheap shots, you know, just to keep them honest. And – Right, that could be okay for the game. Just as long as you're not causing no injury. Injury is a little bit different. Oh, Chris Paul, you know you're my guy. Stop playing that 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 arm pulling this, I'm gonna get under your skin stuff. No, nah, don't do that, bro. Don't please don't do that. There's no room for that in basketball. And that's coming from your biggest fan. Don't do that type of stuff. All right, next game we want to talk about is the number eight C Memphis Grizzlies walking into Utah and getting a win. Um, I, I didn't expect them to win this game, even after the, the Donovan Mitchell news came out, because I did believe that, I mean, they've been without Donovan Mitchell for about a month now, and they've been okay without him. I figured that they would do the same thing today. But this team is the exact opposite of what I was mentioning with the New York Knicks. Um, they have a way to play, and they're going to play like that. And you know what? It almost got the back to this game. I'm not saying they got to change the way they go, but we've seen three-point shooting teams not be super successful in the playoffs because that's all they really know. I think it was Kevin around on his podcast. It was like, man, people people label us as jump shoot or three-point shooting team, but if you look at our shot chart, we shot a ton of mid-range jump shots, and that's a fact. Yes, we do have two of the most legendary three-point shooters of all time, but that's not just all we do here because if you take that away, my apologies, you take that away, we can still get baskets. And if you take away the three-point line or the Utah Jazz aren't shooting good from three-pointers, they're not gonna they're not gonna win. They're not gonna win. And they had a streak of what 10 threes at the minimum of every game of the season. They still hit that, but they only shot 25% from three. And man, let's talk about this Memphis Grizzlies team because these boys are rolling. They feel like a um, they feel like a March Madness type team, and then maybe that's because everybody on their team is so damn young. They feel like a March Madness team, and like I said earlier, Dylan Brooks playing into the heel role is amazing. We don't need to be friends, bro. Him and Mike Conley were teammates just two years ago. He was trying to get under Mike Conley's skin. I, I don't I don't think that translates outside of the court, but while they're on the court, I love a guy like Dylan Brooks to try to get under skins and try to be try to be the bad guy. It's it's beautiful, beautiful for the league. This team with no playoff experience going against a team with like the Utah Jazz are constant playoff teams every single year. Yes, they blew a 3-1 last year, but they're always in the playoffs. They have experience here. Mike Conley, Joe Wingles, Rudy Gobert, Royce, these are all players that have significant playoff experience going against a team with close to none. And they lost this because a team with close to none um, played better defense and, it, and when it mattered the most, I know Dylan Brooks is going to get a lot of love because he scored 31 points. He was he was practically unguardable a lot. And he, he even said in his post-game interview, I felt like there were guys on the other team that can't guard me. I love those type of comments, especially when you do stuff like this. Just don't score six points next game is all I'm saying. But when it mattered the absolute most, John Morant in the pick and roll, deadly. 
They had no way to stop it. You know, Utah would come down and hit a couple shots, but it didn't matter because John Morant was coming down and getting that floater, getting to the basket, and especially with Rudy Gobert, be, a, a, be in the foul trouble, then eventually fouling out, John Morant could just get to the basket whenever he wanted to. Grayson Allen comes in the game, immediately hits a three. Desmond Bain hitting the three, going into the fourth quarter. This team is not afraid of anybody. And that's great to say about a young team, man. Great to say about a young team. Utah will be back. I hope Donovan Mitchell does play. Like, I, I would hate to, for us to get another update before game number two and say, ah, Donovan Mitchell, he ain't ready just yet. Because I want to see every team at the fullest strength possible. And Donovan Mitchell playing does dramatically change the series. Um, they probably win this game if Donovan Mitchell was playing. But he would have been guarded by Dylan Brooks. So maybe not. We will see. We will see. I mean, like, look at this. 4 for 11 for uh, Bojan. Bojan didn't score into the second half, which he had 29 in, so shout out to him. 1 for 3 from Royce O'Neal from 3. Um, uh, 3 for 7 for Mike, uh, for Joe Ingles. 3 for 11 for Mike Conley. 0 for 8 for probably the sixth man of the year, Jordan Clarkson. George's Niang, 1 for 6. It was just a bad, bad, bad shooting night, and you have to mix it up eventually. Rudy Gobert, this is my guy. Y'all know this. I've been, I've been a big fan of Rudy Gobert for a long time. But in this game, he tried to sell – a foul when he wasn't even in the game, and you he, he, you just look dumb, bro. <laughs> Being honest with you, you just did. I, like if you would have drew the foul and got the technical, boom, bada bam, y'all did, whoo, but you didn't, and now you just falling on the floor for no reason, looking like a. Next game we want to talk about is the last game, or I guess the first game of the day. The Washington Wizards lose this game to the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, listen, the, the Washington Wizards didn't play bad today. Russell Westbrook did, but as a collective, they had a they had a game plan and they. They capitalized on that. It's just so happy. They don't have the talent to match Philadelphia. You know what I'm saying? They had a game plan. And the game plan is, hey, let's get Joel and be in foul trouble because as long as he's on the bench, we can ride with anybody else in this team. But if he's on the court, we can't do anything. But I will give a lot of respect to um, to Alex Lynn, to Robin Lopez, to Daniel Gaffer. There's no guard in Joel and B. They did the closest thing to it. They slowed him down at least a little bit. He's going to draw as many fouls as he really wants to. The officiating in this game, god awful. Both sides, terrible. Terrible, terrible. There was multiple times this game. I'm like, I don't even want to watch it because the officiating is so bad. Um, Washington stuck in this. No Russell Westbrook game. Bradley Beal scored um, pretty well. Robin Lopez's hook shot is ridiculous. And that's all they were talking about. Captain Hook, Captain Hook. It got super repetitive um, on the call. You got a Davis Bertans good shooting day. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it was Toby. <laughs> It was Toby, Tobias Harris. Last year in the playoffs, Tobias Harris was terrible. I'm just going to keep it a buck. In the playoffs last year, he was terrible. With no Ben Simmons being there, Tobias Harris had to shoulder a lot more of the pressure on this team, and they got swept by the Boston Celtics. And In that, he just didn't look good. And he was like, hey, that was last year. This is this year. And I see Rui Hachimura in front of me, but I don't. Rui Hachimura got destroyed today absolutely destroyed it didn't matter what Rui tried to do Tobias Harris had a game plan for it. I think it went into halftime with 29 and he ended with 37 a ridiculous a ridiculous game for this guy um Ben Simmons um good game I guess I, I just I I the, the free throws I, uh, I, I like you look at his stat line 6 15 to 15 it's amazing style and plus good defense you know great defense too but 0 for 6 from the free throw line is – Dwight Howard at least hit three of his. Same amount of attempts. He at least hit three. That's one of the worst shoot three uh, free throw shooters of all time. He hit three. Like, I just I just want Ben Simmons to shoot the free throw more. I ain't even asking this boy to shoot jump shots. I don't, that, that ship is sailed. I'm not looking for that ever again. Making free throws a crucial part because late game situation where this is a relatively close game, you can't have the ball in your hands because teams will foul you. It's going to be hack a Ben. You got to hit your free throws. You got to, got to hit your free throws. And he didn't. Seth Curry caught fire. It was that third quarter, early fourth quarter. I don't remember. Seth Curry caught fire, and they ended up getting this win. Another great day of basketball. Now, tomorrow, we have game number two of Miami, Milwaukee, Portland, and Denver. Again, they, those could be both stinkers. I think they're, I think I saw my guy, um, my guy Funky Diabetic tweet something. They're like, we're going to have a day. Yes. What is Tuesday's game? Tuesday's game, 6.30 my time. You got Celtics versus next. 9 o'clock my time, you have game two of Lakers Suns. And then 9.30, you got Lakers Mavericks. Why are you making fans pick which game they want to watch? Why not, why not just divvy up the time a little bit? I don't know. I don't know. You enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Go listen to audio platforms. And uh, I'll maybe see you all tomorrow. If the games are whack, I'm not talking about them.